Welcome to the Flawed, Foolish and Fantastic Podcast. Vaheguru ji ka khalsa, Vaheguru ji ki fateh. Vaheguru ji ka khalsa, Vaheguru ji ki fateh. Welcome to the Flawed, Foolish, Fantastic Podcast. The podcast is a, a way of shedding light on individuals who are doing some great work, especially in the Punjabi Sikh community. Um, and we've broadened it to the Punjabi community because there's people who are not really into Sikh, but can bring something in for other people. Uh, and today I am delighted after pestering and pestering and pestering. I'm surprised you're not for a harassment warning against me. Okay. After pestering you since we've seen the film to bring you on to the podcast. We are flawed and foolish. Me and Monpreet pretty flawed and foolish. We are here to learn from you today. And after witnessing the Battle of 84 film, uh, Battle of Amherst film, which we'll talk about later on, um, we, we we needed to talk to you and we, we were really inspired and I know so many others that are inspired from it. But I know that's not the only piece of work that goes on behind your back. Um, and I know that sits behind uh, other organisations and I know it also sits behind the NSYF, which we'd want to talk about. But the big thing I want to talk about, as always, is the individual. I want to know more about you because what causes you to have that impact in society for the youth of today? So if you're okay, saying I'll start with the questions, if that's all right. Hi, the first one is usually the hardest because Nimrata kicks in and people don't want to talk about themselves, but who is Shamshir Singh? You know, I, when you sent the questions, I thought about that one a lot, and that's, that's the one I struggle with the most because yeah. it kind of goes against everything that we're taught as a Sikh, right? Exactly. Like, Homi is the rog, is the bamari. Yeah. Um, that egocentric existence is what we're taught in the West, yeah. and that's the root of a lot of the problems, this individualistic, you know, life and like where where our community has been atomized, not only as a process of colonization, but here with capitalism, it's all the individual mira kar, mira sab yeah, exactly. And we've been taught from day one, like, you know, that ji open to sab tera wahe guru koi no na jane oh, mera. So, like, yeah, for me, it's like, um, I, can, I can talk about the feelings that I'm driven by, like yeah. from a young age and like, you know, I, I guess they came from the nurturing of the, the environment in the house, but I've always had this desire, like, you know, Sadi Shid Dandi Galhuni Chaidiya, um Sada Raj Huna Chaida, Khalistan Di Galhuni Chaidiya and like I guess I've kind of um nurtured those feelings and yeah. as the older I've gotten the harder it has become to kind of nurture it because yeah. then all of that societal conditioning kicks in that no you should think about the house you should think about the mira parwar mere bache um but then always trying to recenter on those feelings that you know seeing them as a gift that you know not everybody has that dard in their heart that you know kis hade kaum da kuch banna chahida ya and to have that like you know, it's kirpa, it's a blessing and to nurture that I think is is a duty and you know that's what we've always believed. If you have that Pantik Dard, that Jazba, or that Palana Karna to Adda Farjmanda because, you know, the society is gonna try to destroy it. So trying to understand the self in relation to that yes. I think is um is the journey of a Sikh, you know, and obviously we know the the Angrages way I think therefore I am the complete egocentric existence. Well, that's, that's their philosophy, isn't it? Yeah. Because because I think I am Descartes' way of saying I am there, but Siki says, Yene, 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 Hoi, Tiste, Pare, Sata, Hersoi. And the moment you hit that Sata, Hersoi, then you lose all individual oneness anyway. I think that's part of the, the, the struggle, right, that we, we're engaged in for yeah. our liberation, not just physically, like, to, to capture power, but also to reconfigure our vision of society. I think, for me, that goes to the core of the questions about Azadi, about Raj, like what type of Raj we're imagining. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, in relation to that, I think, you know, Jinnah ka si kaum di seva kar like yeah. not in a false sense of nimrata, but in a very serious way, in a very deliberate way, um, just the way we would nurture our children um, and the way we see our children, not as like, you know, the is haddeya, par ehe sadde kar sikhi de bute laggeya. Yeah, yeah. And we have to nurture the sikhi in them. That's the same way we have to nurture that sikhi within ourselves, I guess. Yeah. No, that was, like I said, we had, we, we spoke to Sam 36, it was only about three weeks ago, same question posed to them, and he, he said exactly the same, he was just like, it's the hardest question, because sicky wise you know, you know this this is a destructible form, it's all false, everything is there, and nobody wants to answer. So he did exactly the same, he spoke about, I'm here to do Siva, I'm here to do this, I'm here to do that, and that's, that's my opportunity. Can I start off by asking about your childhood and family back, uh, family upbringing, please? Yeah, sure. Um, so How old are you first? How old are you? Um, I'm like in my mid thirties now. That's right. Kind of lost track, to be honest. Not really <laughs> interested. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I, I grew up in Southall in yeah. Havelock Estate, um, which d- doesn't really kind of exist anymore. The whole area has been gentrified. Developed, yeah, so it's all like posh, swanky apartments, you yeah. know, now. Um, so we were kind of forced out of there. But that's where I um, I grew up. Um, and, you know, my, my family, you know, my mom, my dad, they were joined with the country Ni Jata since they came and they took Amra they, since they migrated here to the UK. Yeah. Um, so one, that, like, environment was kind of my upbringing, going to Ranswai is like, you know, regular kirtan programs in like just the local sangat's houses everyone would go around like every weekend or like every time any there was anything to kind of mark or celebrate it would be you know chalo kirtan career yeah. um so that was basically my upbringing um and then when i was quite young i think i was about two um that's when my dad went to prison um he was part of babar khalsa and then he went to prison here for like seven years um and then i guess like kind of since he came out and then you know tried to re-establish the family because he was working as a at a train guard okay. um he had come from singapore okay. um and in singapore when the gore were there they took a lot of like you know so-called indians to be the police force right because yes, they saw them as more civilizable than the kale who they saw as like you know you know janwar basically yeah. um so you see a lot of like migration of like you know punjabis and sikhs and that whole martial race comes into it right like in police and military all over british colony so my granddad was in the naval police in Singapore. Okay. And then I think the situation changed then then they had to go back to Punjab and then from there my dad came here and because he was born in Singapore he was educated in a military school so he spoke English. Yeah. So he came here so you know worked as a um uh, he worked as a janitor or um in like some factory or something because he tried to get a job in like there was in South was as the wool sausage factory as yeah. the duroplex paint factory um or was another plastic the factory Nestle, Nestle factory that's that's it. It, wasn't it that was all the jobs yeah. then and the foreman my dad told me like when he came here the foreman said you know cut your hair you get a job tomorrow yeah. and he was an amritari at that time he didn't really know much about sikhi but he knew like what his my granddad told him that sikhi is ni kat de um Sorry. No, no, take your time. It's cool. Chill one. I'm guessing you're not living in Southall anymore. Huh? You're not living in Southall. No, South we Hall live anymore. in Hayes now. Um, right. just on the border. But like, you got, yeah. You got yourself out of Southall. That's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I mean, it's the only place I kind of ever felt at home. <coughs> at home. Yeah. Yeah, well, we were at Good Nancy College. So I was there as a 12-year-old, sure. right? 92. Yeah. So my mossy lived um Oh, where was it? It's just around the corner from the gordar you get the bridge that goes over she lived in that end so it's not far from havelock road that's basically where we lived in yeah. in havelock estate on wiley road but it's not wiley road anymore it's changed, was, you know you get that little roundabout before mm. you go over the bridge mm-hmm. she lived off the roundabout just there Tiga, in so, in those gray kind of flats yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so one she of my lived friends lives the there. there so for us that was home yeah, we used yeah. to come there and look at the planes all the time and Yeah. That's going to hit us now. Like those those kids. So yeah, I mean like oh yeah, I get like super emotional when I talk about my yeah, dad because he's been um such a a huge influence in my life. Yeah. Um but yeah, I mean like so I, from that moment when like my dad um you know like kind of made that decision like you know like I'd rather take a job as a cleaner than yeah. work in a factory and have to cut my gears. Um and then he he met some things here in the UK he started learning more about sikhi started like you know doing his part took amrit and at that time uh, this was like the early 70s and we see like the 78 vasakhi sakka happens yes um so obviously that has a big impact especially amongst the jatha but ju- not just the jatha but taksal as well because there's a lot of nirta between the singh yeah, and yeah, singhia at that close. time right um so obviously that changes a lot of the situation and like jira you know like the singh say like sangarsta utum mud banneya janda that modern armed movement begins at that kind of point where that turn away from the state away from the sarkar away from you know that that type of you know mang patter politics to on like you know shastra to bina sarna niga like they on they on annihilation right on the sarkar ne apna muh nanga karta they showed the policy um so yeah i mean like from that moment so that that kind of impacted obviously our whole upbringing and like you know the environment of our house um like the stack deep connection with sikhi with the gurbani with um, that pyar for sings and like one of the seva karni yeah. 
Um, so yeah, like that was that was the environment, and then obviously like the Western education begins, high school, university, and all that sort of thing. Near, dur, dur tapegi, like you know, with Sikhi, and you know, I didn't really have like friends outside of um, Sikh Sikhi, circles yeah, yeah, yeah. outside, and so like college, university was the first time I kind of made friends outside, and you know, like Mari Sangat Mil Jandia. That's a, yeah, yeah. But you got to experience that in order to know what is good Sangat. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, you don't know what's bad Sangat. We're not. We're not infallible beings. Uh, so yeah. You know, the only one who is infallible is the Satguru. And you will call. And then, um, kind of like being on that path in like university, kind of early university days, I did like computer science, didn't really like concentrate on studying. Um, and like I got into in my early twenties, I got into like a, a a fight, like quite serious. I I, I was stabbed in my chest. I nearly died. Um, oh. And then I I was in in hospital, and like all of the um, all of the upbringing came back. You know. Yeah. Okay, like you know, um, and what a sick is, and like uh, because in that in that situation, I wasn't afraid of dying, but like I was afraid that my life would have been wasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because you you think to yourself, we were born with the best opportunity in the best in the best background, Sikhi, mm. and you start at that moment when you think my life's going to go, you realize you're like, I've been a bit of a grit gun here, you know, I've been ungrateful to the opportunity that I've been provided. Now, you're fine, you, you've taken it on with you, keep your case, you keep your cards with you. I took mine with I broke it years and years ago, I took it again. So I know, I know I'm a Kritkan already. But when you get to that point where you're like, I might not have an opportunity after this moment mm. to, uh, you know, reap what I should have sowed. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it makes you think, doesn't it? Was that life? Obviously, it's going to be I mean, a life yeah, changing like, moment. I was, I was lying there in, in hospital, and like everything that my dad had taught me, like came flooding back. That like, uh, you know, like, and that, and that the biggest realization that hit me was like I wasn't afraid to like l- throw my life away over something that was completely meaningless yeah. and egotistical. Um, and like this isn't how a six life should be spent yeah. like you know sikh janna var they are like but not for these reasons exactly. so that was like a real kind of awakening moment of like reconnection of of me discovering the value of sikhi for myself versus you know like uh, in that environment where my parents and other six are that had an experience sikhi in that way like yeah. that that catch like you know um that deep desire like you know that like, like what is the purpose of of this jindagi yeah. um and like yeah like uh, that's when at that moment i experienced it for myself yeah. um okay you know this like not being attached to this life at all is is the goal um and and that's where like that real kind of that lingering feeling that was been there since childhood that you know jeevan pant de le khil lagge like however in whichever capacity like we've got all these stories of our mahan shaheed who like went attached to their individual jeevan yeah. but they were like the pant of us they kosh hove so for me that was like a re kind of focusing um and then from that moment is you know the nsyf kind of emerges out of that um uh give me meeting. two seconds i'm going to take you back because the yeah, honest wife i've got I, i want to get to that can i ask about your dad for a moment i yeah. know it might be if it's if it's too much we don't have to talk. um you said dad went to prison what was that for so that was for um i think the charges were like possessions of explosives and okay. you know like terrorism essentially yeah, yeah. related charges here in the uk um and he was obviously a member of babar khalsa because yeah, yeah. when he took uh, amrit and like the you know the, that jathebandi emerges from that yeah. moment um so uh, you know just jithe vi sang sage jinna de vich like tang sagi like panth di seva karno like they became jatheband in as six had been doing countless times right yes. throughout our entire atyas jatheband hoye um, you know apne morche um, you know sambe kamar kase kitte ta tor pe right yeah. so in that seva like my dad's um, role uh, you know um, shastra di seva karni uh, you know trying to you know organize jithe mara mota kar sakde si training saman pachona um, you know Here or India? He, he went to prison here in the UK. He went to yeah. prison here. Okay. Yeah, he went to prison here. So how long did did he have to go in for? Uh, seven years. Seven years. Was it all London based? No, they sent him um, into like maximum security prisons. Okay. Like I think at one point he was on a prison in Isle of Wight. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he yeah. was in a prison in um, I think uh, Brixton somewhere. It'll be Isle of Shepey, Brixton, places yeah. like that. Max so security. Yeah. Yeah, so like I mean, he used to tell like stories <coughs> of uh, him, his time in prison as well. Um, like 
I mean, I always want to ask like these types of things, right? You know, mm. about the Sangarsha, about like, you know, the movement yeah. and, and his answer, like, like everything that we've spoken to about this, their answer was always the same. Mm. Like, you know, and he's like, that's what you got to do. Focus on your kamai. Mm. And like, like, you know, like things that we thought weren't possible. Yeah. Like, Satguru ne appe raad khate hai ke this is this what's gonna happen. He was involved in the Bianta Kand as well. Okay. So like um and it happened on his birthday. So he was like. Is that with with the lava singer that one? Yeah. Oh, really? so, so he was like he was on his birthday and he's like watching the time on his clock and he's like you know his time's up right now. So and even even in prison he was telling the the stories he would tell about like you know his time or like when he went there it was like um the first prison he went uh, I think it was like Brixton or somewhere in South yeah. London it was like a high security one and he's like it was a really really bad prison yeah. um you know really like violent people in there like it was really dirty um and he's like he was just used to do a uh, part in his cell um he just said part of and he would just constantly read bani and like do ardas and he's like one day uh, the prison inspector came and closed down the prison right okay <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what was there, was was there a reason? Because they they normally shut down prison if there's a riot in there or something. I like don't that. know, man. He's like the ek ek din aya like he needs like he's like pura prison he band karta and he's like <coughs> my vishwas is this because of the bani I read in that cell. Yeah. Uh, no, man. I I like I worked. I spent two and a half years working as a prison officer as well. Mm. So I was in Stockholm. So by so by the Jinder Singh, who obviously was there for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. I got to speak to him every day. And the Josh in him, you know, he, what got me was, right, he was in his 60s, and this man's doing chin-ups in front of me in prison. And I was sitting there going, man, I can barely get off my kursi, yeah, let alone do a chin-up. But the, you know, he'd, he'd been in prison for over 33 years when I spoke to him. After the, um, was it, Dash and Dasi case, mm. he was in for that. So uh, just speaking to him, and the Josh in him, and the Prem in him, talking about those days, and... He said the right things in front of the right people as well. You know, he wasn't... He, people look at him and think he's come from India or whatever. He, you know, in front of the prison officers, it's, yeah, you know, I'm reformed. I don't... You know, what I did was wrong. He said the right things. But you knew his brain was still in the same place. And you can see it, because since he's come out, he's exactly there. So I had him in there and uh, a couple of other things. And you can hear the stories of the Sangosh. You can hear the stories or whatever. And then the really interesting thing, I, I know I'm breaking off from your story... But we had a prison chaplain in there. And the prison chaplain was Apunagur Sikhsiga. And he was a Granthi. And I'm not going to say where he's a Granthi. But basically he used to be the prison chaplain. And he used to come in and talk. And then the, the Sings would leave. The other Sings who weren't really involved in Sikhi. And Parajin Sings stay when he'd stay. And they knew each other from India. Which is really weird. Basically he this Singh was a student during the time of 83, 84. And he was involved in the Sangarsh prior to uh, the Battle of Amritsar. And Sanjanel Sinji told him at the time that he needed to leave the country. And his dad got him out to Dubai. From Dubai, he got here. And he was involved in all that. And you're like, this man's a prison chaplain. He's, he's here to help the Sings. And at the same time, he, he had been through all that. You know, and it's amazing when you hit that generation that they all seem to be there was one goal, there was one initiative, and that was the Azadi. That was, hang on, we've seen now that we're stuck as Galamis and everybody was doing something. Mm. And it was interesting. So when you say about your dad, he was in Jatha, he's expected. It was just normal to go, hang on, what are you doing today? Are we looking at this? Okay, where do we go from here? Mm. And like I said, I saw the Jin Singh in prison. There was no Gora who would step up to him. This is a 60-year-old man, and... He was so well respected by prison officers, by everybody. What you know, he he had made himself in there, and there was no stress. But I, you know, you'd think to yourself, you're like, there's seven things in a 1,200 man prison here. We've got a wing on that side that's full of 128 Muslims. If shit was to kick off, it's going to go bad. But it was never going to happen with him. Mm-hmm. He was just able to control it, and I can imagine, you know, good six of the day, like your dad and people like that sitting in prisons in the 80s. They were horrible places. The prison system was completely different. The the bullying, the beatings, whatever, by the prison officers, that definitely went on, because I know it went on. Mm-hmm. But you can imagine, because your dad wouldn't have got involved in the prison politics, he wouldn't have got, got involved in the uh, the goods that were coming in and out, there's no black trade market, whatever. For some people, it's a, 
a bit of a bliss it's a moment of awakening isn't it yeah I think that that's what he would share obviously it was like difficult yeah but um, you know he would say like in, in the early days like people would want to know what you're in for yeah and they'd ask questions they'd try to find out try to you know send someone to become your friend to find out yeah and he's like he just kept quiet did his bhakti yeah. and then he made one friend and he's like he told him what he was in for and then he's like that that guy then obviously went and told, told him everybody else, yeah. and then and he's like then the whole dynamic changed and he's like everyone would just give him so, him so much respect yeah. because like every people are in there for like crimes or like you know petty things and you some somebody's in there for the seva of their dish their calm you know the the whole environment changes and you probably saw that first hand yeah, with like that how other prisoners respected everybody him. i mean like the god used to come and talk to him everybody's talking to him. i'm thinking man this is a singer who's come from india one, one is english is wicked now anyway but the prison officers you know I'd never seen a report by the prison on a prison officer saying how good he was. Constantly. I mean constantly. Mm -hmm. The prison officers loved him. They had so much respect for him as a person, as an individual. He was at that level that he was a mentor in prison for those people who would come in and they were scared of their life and they were on drugs or whatever. He was their mentor for loads of gore, loads of, obviously loads of Muslim and he didn't. You know, and he got that respect, not just, you know, that, but then when they hear about his crime, they're like, shit, I'm not going to mess with him anyway. Mm -hmm. Because even if I did, if he's willing to take somebody out on the outside, come all the way over here and do that, and I'm dead in the cell. It's a different yeah. level of seriousness. Oh, yeah. And you know what we found, like, in our research into the Sangarsh and, like, the things that went to prison, whether yeah. it was in India, whether it was, you know, in Romania, whether it was yeah. here, the exact same story. Yeah. Like, they were universally respected by yeah. other inmates yeah. and, obviously, the prison authorities. And they know that these people aren't people. They're, like, in there for a principal, sadantic exactly. reason. And they're not, they're not going to compromise on their sadant. And, like, the things in, that went to prison in Romania and in the Khand there, like, they would go to the... The governor's house that the governor gave them chabbi to his house and be like you know do chaju pilo like whatever you want and um the indian officials came from india to romania to torture them in romania yeah. and obviously at that time you know the country was very close with india so a yeah. lot of stuff would go on um and you know the you know these uh, their indian officials wanted to know the names of other people they didn't reveal the names um and then the other prisoners found out who these guys were yeah. and like what what reason that they were in there for and just generally obviously they didn't have a problem with Romania or anybody right. else or the Romanian government you know but their issue was sadantic and you know you just hear that story all the time like yeah. you know the things in prison they, they get so much respect from everyone else and also like just generally they they, they must they completely must like mm. they yeah, a lot of them go into their now. their bhakti lots of things my dad would say as well like he was like there during the movement times in Nibani Kantasagi yeah. um, and like just all day in his cell just doing bhakti just doing Sokhumni Sai Paat Asa Kiwar so in Nibani Kantasagi and then and then we came out afterwards he like started driving a truck because that's one of the yeah, yeah. jobs you can get as a well, uh, someone with a criminal re record and he's like he loved that job as well he's like just sara din part kari yana well they other good yeah. six in with dad at the time he saw um, Bhai Manjeet Singh and Bhai Rajinder oh, yeah, Singh okay, yeah. and then I, I met Bhai Manjeet Singh once um, at, at the rally and um, he was like I saw your dad in prison when, he, when we came in and he was walking in and uh, he saw us like from far and he's like Uchi dani fate fate, yeah. and he's like our like horns like, just went up so much exactly yeah. That's why when I saw him, I was like, so fun. because that's just a big thing yeah. in, in anybody, you know, it just does. Yeah. But no, you know, like I said, I've, I've seen a number of things in prison. And there's a difference between things, as in Gursiks, and just upper and Punjabi of prison. Mm -hmm. And you see that. And like I said, when I saw the, whichever prison you go to and there's Gursiks in, especially when it comes for uh, what we consider terrorist related offences here in the UK, but, you know, basically, standing up for civil rights and principles, you see the initial fear by the prison officers and whatnot, because they're just like, hang on, again, it causes bunker. Within two or three months, these people become really trusted. Mm. They're worried about radicalization, so they stop that, especially with the Muslim one, I see that today. But I saw it was the Jin's thing, like I said, there was none of that, there was absolutely none. Um, and like I said, he went through a horrible time initially in prison, because that's how it starts, but things are very different today for when he was released but no so obviously we just talked about dad dad came out back into the family um how's how's that getting back used to dad's here every day now this is cool 
Yeah, I mean, it was an adjustment because, like, he was also young when he went yeah. in, and then when he come came out, like, you know, I was a bit more aware as a child. Yeah. So it took a, a moment to like get used to like this new person that's back in the yeah. house that you didn't really know. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of it, it you know, I just I, my youngest memories are like obviously going to visit him in prison, yeah. like just being shy, not really understanding what's going on, um, and then yeah, just. You know, I guess we kind of get you get back into that role. Then car de halat we both okay at yeah. that time. Um, you know, like just just materially, the conditions were very difficult because you've you're you know in a in a country and you've lost, you know, um, the, the father figure. Father yeah, figure you've lost like you know the income and like, you know, just the things are difficult. So obviously that took you know um, its toll and you know it took time to kind of adjust. Um, and like make sense of it as well, you know. As like I went on my own journey to understand, like you know, is what the Sangarsh ki hai And then eventually making my peace with that and understanding, and you know, and uh, and now looking at the, my dad the way I do, and like all of not just him, but all of those individuals. Yeah. Um, I think it's one thing that Seva said. He's like, you know, you got to remember there are some people that read the news about their you know siblings becoming shaheed and they wanted to enter the battlefield, yeah. and others read the news and put the paper down and went to work yeah, exactly. and that that just always stays with me you know and like it's just it, it, these are the halata that we're in yeah. so like those, all of those individuals that at that time um you know just left their homes and like try to enter the sangarsh in yeah. whichever way they could or support in whichever way they could uh they they'll always have like my respect and it's one of the things that my dad would say like um he, when he passed away in 2018 yeah. um and you, like by that time because he was on like so many medications yeah. and like you know his health problems began in prison as well because when he went in he was Sarblo so okay. he would eat prashadde that would come from home my yeah. mom would bring like you know a tear of ronte for him and he'd eat them and, and the next visit would come and she'd bring more and then the the prison officers because obviously it's all psychological games they want to break you you know so they realized that this isn't really having an effect this guy is relaxing so they stopped the food from outside yeah. then he got dispensation to make his own food on religious grounds because okay. he was babiki then they stopped that and then then it was just like you know boiled uh, alu and yeah, jaw for is. seven years and then you know obviously then he came out and he worked day and night so his health began to deteriorate massively and then the you know the last like um you know m most of my life it was either knowing my dad like not being there because he's in prison or not being there because he's working, working or be him being bedbound because now he's just ill and like mm. you know and that deterioration process was really really slow the kidney failure then going on dialysis and then like to the last moments when he was like completely couldn't move um but he'd say something when he was fit and healthy and then you know by the the end of it he he didn't know like um you know where he was or like you know if he had eaten and stuff yeah. but he said the same thing like literally like his last conversation with me um he it was the same uh, same exact same phrasing like you know remember jado kaum te pari pendia se kada far je unne kar ni bana like seva karni yeah which is you know, just watching that film when you get that bit with the meeting with the Akhan Kirtan Jatha and they say, we're not going home. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll still fight the yeah. fight the jungle, but we're not going to go home. Don't settle back down and don't live with those pleasures because you forget about what, what's real out there. Yeah. What would have been interesting in your life would have been that we sit around, we're looking for these little jeevanies and pieces of paper and things like that. But you would have had libraries, literally these libraries of knowledge around you, all these people that were involved with your dad or knew your dad and knew things going on. That must have been amazing because we look for role models and you had them coming to you basically. Yeah, you know, honestly, like for a, a while, I didn't really understand or didn't appreciate. Yeah. Um, after his passing, like one of the things that hit me the most was not like just his physical departure, because mm. as a dad, like you know, I mean, you know, he he wasn't probably the greatest dad. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what we all think of that, and then you realize when they go. But as a Sikh, yeah. I mean, a, a phenomenal Sikh, you yeah. know, and like I, I would I would prefer the Sikh over the dad because the Sikh is what actually raises you, you know. Yeah. Um, and he'd always he'd ask him a question. He'd always give me the a correct answer as a sick, not yes. as a parent. You know, yes. with other parents would be like, "Nee, dani karna, ani karuga, like idda hujugi, like you know, kato pange lene, kormanta denaal." And and he'd be like, you know, he's like, "Ila jira di stand lea hathiyar van sangar chraya." And he's like, "Eh, he sahi stand ya, eh to kadi mukarna nii hega." And like always give like the this correct advice, and and that was a beautiful thing, and. 
you know, afterwards, like when he had, when he was gone, like um, I realized like how much knowledge now is missing from my life yeah, that I took for advantage. Like this guy read everything, man, all the Prat and Grants, like, you know, just a Tuarik Guru Khalsa, like everything, you know, you could think of, um, you know, Dasam Bani, like had so much Bani Kant could relate Atiyas to Gurbani in that way that just sparks you, you know, mm. um, and all of that just went, you know, and like That's I'm so relearning stuff. And like I would like for me like for, he was like a, a a grounding and guiding force because I would go learn stuff, yeah. and then I would go back and explain it to him in Punjabi, even though you could speak English yeah. fluently. But I'd explain it to him in Punjabi because I wanted to convey the idea. And for me, it was only true if I could explain it in Punjabi, because yeah. the Gora um, ideas it, it's harder for them to hide in Punjabi because yeah. the language you know unmasks them in in a way that English you know you know covers the, those Gora ideas up. So. Yeah. I would want to like explain in Punjabi to him and you know it was it was beautiful to see like you know so many things that he already knew and that he had already uncovered and the way I was making my own kind of connections I remember I said to him once I was like dad you haven't moved from this bed for a while but you're still so far ahead of me yeah. and that like just blew my mind no it is it's, uh, the African proverb is that that every time a person dies a library's been burned mm. because the amount of knowledge that they retain and like I said, the stories and things like that, and you would probably be hearing it from other people now going, I remember I did this with your dad, and your dad did this, and mm. he's sitting there going, I didn't know that, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's me. So, uh, like I said, I got a oh, but I needed to ask you about your dad, because you mentioned it, and I know somebody would go, hang on, you didn't even probe that for a moment. Um, you talked about your education, but what was your education? Where did you go? What, what did you study? What did you want to do? That's the, the big thing. That Honestly, I, I didn't really understand. I think when I went to college, I wanted to do like, um, you know, classical civilizations and yeah. law and like, you know, I didn't really know because I was the first of my family to go to university. So like, I don't know what a university is. Mm. Like, didn't, you know, it was the first, uh, you know, to go through this education system. So like our generation, I think our parents that didn't go through that, they didn't understand. Like, I know what this country is now better than my parents because You've I was raised it. by the Britain in a certain mm. way, right? It, so... So yeah, I'm like, I was kind of lost and fumbling through my entire kind of education. Didn't really have much direction. Didn't really know what to do. Didn't know what a job was or what a career was. Um, and didn't take that stuff seriously either. That has to be said for me. Like you know, the Sangarsh was everything. Yeah. Um, Sikhi was everything, and all of this stuff was irrelevant. Um, like in, in my house, like my dad used to tell me off for watching TV, and he would say to me that like there's nothing in this for you, mm. like you don't watch it, like it's gonna make you stupid. Yeah. And I wouldn't understand that as a young kid, and in my head I would think, no, dad, you're stupid. There's nothing wrong with TV. Yeah. And now I've learned about colonialism and you know the psychology and how you know all of this stuff is a big conversation now. And I'm like, damn, the, the guy was right. And maybe mm. they, our parents couldn't articulate those things in the way that we can because we've got a, you know, more we're more closer with English and all of this stuff. Well, so like we were trapped in a cycle of mind and they were yeah. broken from that already because they'd realised yeah. what was relevant to life and what wasn't. We, yeah. we didn't, it's like the innate self-preservation yeah. also kicks in as well, right? Like, yeah. you know, when your parents are like, and we're like, oh no, they're stupid or they're backwards. Yeah, exactly. Really, they're not. They're trying to protect and preserve you, but and they don't. Uh, they can't articulate what the problem is. Yeah. And my dad would say, and like, as I'm growing and I'm like going through my actions, education which is learning about what it means to be uh, here in this country yeah. that for us to be here where we came from no longer exists yeah. and everyone here is essentially effed and we're displaced and that's a very serious generational violence that's occurred we've broken from not only our tarti but our relationship with the tartis changed yeah. our relationship with each other has changed everything is about like we began the individual about maya about everything we're warned against that becomes life now yeah, yeah. and six are teaching their children that success um, monetary success yeah. um, a, a educational success is success now and Sikhi has become a secondary thing it's like <laughs> you know it's that kind yeah, of mentality yeah, yeah. now right and and that's very dangerous like yeah. I mean just like you know we see with this um, 
a lot of people don't know how to process that or understand it outside of the cultural hegemony of being British, mm. that they've lost someone or, or like not a, a family that, you know, has literally built a Raj from, uh, um, you know, destroying Punjab. Yeah. Um, and we should see them as violent, a violent entity that has uh, done a very good job of, you know, uh, of reframing themselves as a benevolent force. And, you know, I heard a, one interview of a Sikh who said, oh, she never said anything that was really bad or controversial. She didn't need to. She's sitting on a throne made of the you know skulls of your people not just that the, uh, what they're looking for is resistance right so this person hasn't said anything bad but at the same time they've not said anything good and the the acquiescing mm. and resisting so just going along with it yeah. you know is a different thing somebody will say oh but she did this she did that and somebody's going hang on she wore a jadabba she wore a hat she did this you know she came to Granada Gordo and Leicester when she opened in 2002 and she did exactly the same thing you know so there wasn't the relevant respect but people aren't going to process that because people put themselves like you said as British first and as Sikhi after yeah and you think it's like people don't understand how much of that is learned I, I didn't understand how much of that like what it, my relationship with Britishness is and I would say my real kind of education began with the formation of National Sikh Youth Federation which is yeah. to like see look we these are the conditions in front of us now what we're lacking is like resources mm. what we're lacking is this idea of you know leadership or this question of leadership of direction of um, our Sikh orgs are really concerned and obsessed with explaining Sikhi to the Gore and not communicating to the Pant like our Pant knowledge on our lacking direction and if we're always talking about our Shaheeds and you know I think one of the the, the big realisation moments for us is uh, for me in particular was in our Gurdwari we had Shaheed these Magams we'd yeah. have like you know San Janel saying Bimi Sadida Mahan Sikh Taddi Wara singing their Wara and outside of it um, they were called terrorists extremists religious fanatics and there was this big gulf this big divide and nobody would enter into the public discourse in this country especially you know when Nahal you must have heard his conversations right like he was a yeah. big guy BBC Asian Network nobody would enter into that public discourse and be like these guys aren't terrorists they're mm -hmm. heroes um, and that was kind of a, a big moment that you know we have to kind of in interrupt and infiltrate and interject in, in public discourse um, and becoming Jateban, forming NSYF, and that process that I've gone on to learn about, like colonialism courses. I've, I'm starting an MA now yeah. in culture, diaspora, ethnicity to learn about this in more detail. And just just the way credentialization works in this country. Mami MA ki tia hon you know, like you know, it gives you, uh, it gives you legitimacy. Because, yeah, it's, uh, legitimacy. Yeah, it is, yeah. Because this is the way this academic hierarchical system works. Yeah. You know, so understanding how we can, you know, divert its power. Power, divert the power of the academy create space for ourselves you know when I was talking to my dad about decolonization he was like what's the benefit of it to the Sangarsh and for me it was like you know it is a talia like you know they, they attack sons they attack our shaheeds and they call them fanatics mm. decolonization and this entire framework that Kale have done literally Unada Sangarshia they've formulated this like theoretical framework yeah. it protects us it gives us a, a, the striking blow of the Angrej that goes straight to the Shaheeds it gives us hang on a second you know where are you speaking from yeah. who's your expert on Sikhi what is your definition of this so we get to kind of unpack the rules of their game question their rules question the arena mm -hmm. versus trying to be represented with in the arena which I think a lot of six have fallen the, the trap into well the issue you have is the consideration of somebody being a freedom fighter and a terrorist is an extremely thin line based on politics and worldview at the time and who wins well it does matter about who wins because like you said the the lines can't write their own history it's always the victor it's always given from the side of the the, um, the hunter the issue you have is it depends on the worldview at the point while after V. de Klerk was in, in charge and obviously you had everything going on in South Africa, the biggest terrorist was Nelson Mandela. He sat, he sat in Robin Island forever. Now he's lauded. But it is, it's about that sort of thing. It's about the internal politics. Somebody's only a terrorist to these states if they go against what they believe. But when they do exactly the same thing, so when we talk about the, you know, talking foreign, foreign policy, when they go into Iraq, Syria, Libya, whatever, it's helping people. When Russia does the same, it's a terrorist approach, it's encroaching, it's whatever. And it's the same with us, because the politics of the Indian government was way laden with the English government, which we know through 
the findings that were found with the papers between Margaret Thatcher and the SAS and things like that. It's we were only considered terrorists because we were on the other side, and and that's all it comes down to. And and it's about like you said, structuring that and explaining that, because a lot of people go terrorists, terrorists, terrorists. We've seen it this week on Instagram feeds and things like that, and Twitter and whatnot. Um, and it's about like you said, we need people to engage in that conversation, because prior to that, you just have hotheads going on go. No, they're not terrorists. It's it's our thing, but you got to explain. Oh, I'm I'm pretty hot headed myself. No, no, no. But but for me, it's like but it's you, about know the the, you know about the background. You know about the terms of the engagement. You know about the yeah. Green Revolution. You know about the 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 movement of water. You know about the the um, putting a cap on the grain sales. You know about all those sorts of things which lead to an oppressive state. An oppressive state will have anything. You put a lid on a boiling uh, pan of water, it will try to boil over, and that's what happens. If you put enough pressure on carbon, it becomes a diamond. And it's exactly the same way. Yeah. So, yeah. with your education, I know you said you didn't know where you were going. What What did you study at uni? What uh, did you go computer into? science. Yeah. What did you want to do? You st- I, I know, know you said you didn't want to. No, I, don't, I honestly, I, I I vaguely remember thinking Bill Gates is the richest man. If I study computer science, I might make yeah. something of myself. Something along those lines. And then um, I I don't think I was prepared like emotionally, spiritually for like what university was and that environment and that like you know so called freedom. And it became a very distracting and in in some ways a very destructive place for me. Yeah. Um, Where was uni? Where did you go? Um, I went to Wolverhampton first to actually do war study. Well, shit well. Yeah, and then it was really isolating because you know that was the first time I walked into a room and it was full of white people. Yeah, and that was really a big shock. You yeah, know, growing up got, in South. We, we've grown up in Leicester. Yeah, we're surrounded by it. So when we went to college and went, it's full of Asians. So that was like a big thing for us. And then mm. you lot gone the other way and gone. Hang on, what's happening? Here? Honestly, I, was, I don't. I've ne- I had never seen that many white people congregated in a space, and I was <laughs> like, I instantly felt like I didn't belong and completely self conscious and. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, like it was, it was a really violent experience, like yeah. university, just, just just as a whole. I think academia generally is a really destructive place, mm-hmm. um, you know. But yeah, I mean, I wasn't prepared at all. I didn't have any other kind of tools to, to go in. And did yeah. you come out of uni with a with a degree or anything? Mm, yeah, barely. Yeah, yeah we still got one. Yeah, and that's the thing. You still got one. we. I dropped out, man. Other people dropped out. Things. He's more educated than I'll ever be in my life. But honestly, so, everything that I would consider education, mm. none of that came from formal schooling. The only thing that they've taught me here is to speak their language yep. um, and kind of, you know, hide myself and defend myself from them in the way they do from us. You know, like understand their games, yeah. basically. Um, but yeah, I mean, like everything I've actually learned that's been of value about Sikhi has come from people within Sangat. Yeah. It's come from Taddi Vara, it's come from Tarmik Geet, it's come from Kata. It's come from, you know, just immersing myself in uh, the environment of Sikhi. It's come from, um, you know, Kankriti, Jathar, Taksal, from our Sakhya, you know, about our Shaheeds. Um, what I'm learning now in my MA, like, is, is really useful. Um, there's a lot of... I went on a course previously a few years ago um, yeah. about decolonization. Um, uh, uh, there's a collective of, like, you know, all these decolonial scholars, and they run, like, a summer school. And I went on that for two weeks, and, and that was really kind of profoundly eye-opening. Um, and, you know, all these kind of feelings, like, I would never liked Gore, and, like, now I understood why, and I had language to articulate that in a lot more detail. Well, tell me about it. Tell, obviously, there's going to be a big jump between doing a degree in computer science mm-hmm. to jumping into the MA. Mm-hmm. I was going to talk about your employment between that and what you're doing, but forget that for a moment. Tell me about how you've gone on to this MA. I know you've ended up on this course. How have you ended up on this course initially, this so, summer thing? So um, so this summer thing, uh, I had... Um, Somebody had recommended it to me. Uh, one of the things that was actually, um, you know, across borders in Canada, you, yeah. you know, we had, we had connected. He was studying in SOAS at the time, um, and he had recommended this course. Um, and, like, for me, it was always, like, a kind of a, a weirdly, a weird kind of rule I lived my life by, um, which isn't really going to sound really odd, but, you know, it, it was, for me, it was very black and white. If, if there's a choice between taking a step towards something that I would consider pantic or yeah. something that I would consider worldly, whenever I'm faced with that choice, I'd always step towards what pantic. I would consider pantic, yeah. always. And just keep living by that simple rule, you know, I ended up on that course. I ended up on this MA. We ended up with National Sikh Youth Federation, yeah. the Khalistan Center, the documentary. Like, so for me, it's never really put me wrong in that way. So. Yeah. 
yeah, so I mean, I found out about that course, and um, you know, I you know ended up raising the money and, and going on it, and um, yeah, it was a really really eye opening experience because a lot of the, the all the people in there were like PhD scholars yeah. and like lecturers, and you know, because this was a few years ago now when decolonization was beginning to kind of like bubble in like yeah. the university and like the academic discourse, um, and then being in that space. And realizing because of my understanding of the Sangarsh, mm -hmm. because of my um, relationship with Sikhi, this stuff n inherently made sense to me. You know, yeah. like it, it was, I was like, yo, we don't need to learn like about um, us being humans or like what humanity is because Guru Nanak Bach has already explained that to us. Yeah. These Angrej didn't understand what humanity was. And I find it quite like laughable. And obviously from that egocentric, you know, existence where you think you're the pinnacle of creation, yeah. you and then obviously all of the zulum is going to come out of that, yeah. that um, egocentric existence. And yeah, I mean, that was a really great course. I've, I had a really strong feeling in that, that I wish like, you know, this knowledge could be distributed in the Panth. And, well, like, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. What is it that you can take from that and distribute to the Panth? What is it that you've, you, what tools have you added to your kit? Like a lot of um, understanding of, of, about like this theoretical framing that has been done by scholars before, yeah. um, which gives us space again, like you know that that tal, right? Yeah. It gives us space because the ota siddha hatta like you yeah. know you look like this, so you're like the arm and grade sees us, mm -hmm. sees a uh, particularly a male sick body with the dari the side. They think Osama bin Laden. Of We've grown up here, right? So we know the reality, and the ota siddha hatta they attack us in that way. So this kind of um, decolonization, you know, theory and work and, um, you know, knowing about these scholars, knowing about like, you know, where these conversations have begun from, what's came before, um, it gives you a lot of tools, like to understand the, the cycle, the repetition, because yeah. a lot of people are caught in reactionary rhetoric or really kind of low level conversations that they think that they're the first to have this idea. Yeah, of course. When you have, when you get into that kind of academic approach and you realize, hang on, these conversations conversations have occurred before they you know uh, there's a, a particular context a particular moment where this world emerges mm. um, and it's not that long ago you know like we've lived l longer as a azad qom than we have under their system like from 1849 yeah. to 1947 is is that kind of that's a very important period of time oh, I, I'd, I'd put it even for Maharajanji Singh goes in 1839 yeah, and then the we have the battles. Tree. So we got the yeah. Sabraon, we get yeah. um, Mudki, we get Ferozpur, yeah. we get uh, Chilinwala, we get all those battles. So that, between like that. that and we lose Mahara, you know, mm. Nonahal Singh, uh, Maharaj Sher Singh, we get uh, obviously Gulab Singh, the, you know, all those. We get a lot, but by that time, it's already in. Because up until the Sataluj, the Patiala mm. states, Naba states, Kapulta states, they were already under the British anyway. Yeah, yeah. They were already there. And so, like, that moment of like, 1947 is that kind of formalization where we're now in their world now yeah. the Khalsa has been separated into a political and a religious identity religious under the SGPC political under Akali Dal yeah. your being is now fragmented you mm -hmm. can't exist as a whole Khalsa and then what Santa Jana Singh obviously they, t they yeah. turn away from that but that moment 1947 to now is not that long ago no, and no. look how much the psychologically um, spiritually the Panth has changed in, yeah. in a lot of 75 years in a lot yeah in, in a lot of profound ways yeah. like I'm here you here with I think and speak in English yeah. you know I have to like struggle to reclaim Punjabi reclaim my connection to Maboli and that's going to be a lifelong thing and whatever I forget like you know a thought that hits me a lot is I know less Punjabi than my mum and it's just because my mum refused to learn English yeah. that I know this Punjabi and my kid's going to know less Punjabi than me that's exactly how it is I was about to say that and somebody said to me the other day they go you can tell whether you're Punjabi or British uh, without even asking anybody. I said, what are you on about? I said, when you forget something or you need to do something, you know you have that moment where you think to yourself, do you speak in Punjabi or in English? I was like, it's always in English. He's like, there you go, that's where you first. That's, that's what you should become. He goes, but to your parents, it, it's different. They'll be speaking in their first language. Yeah. Like, and, and that's where you know, you're just like, holy crap, my, I've conditioned my mind to yeah. speak in English. And don't leave the gas on. Did I do that? It's not in, in Punjabi. It's always in English. 
It's mad, and 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 the next generation, like, I hope, uh, hopefully they don't, but a lot of them do. And you hear this conversation that, you know, our culture is backwards, or like, you know, this whole, and this emerges with like race um, discourse and of the backwards culture, and like, you know, that whole academia thing where these uh, conversations come uh, yeah. come from, right? There, you, but you hear them because it's so internalized. You hear like youngsters saying, "Oh, our culture is backwards," or like, you know, our parents don't let us wear these clothes, and that's backwards. Mm. The West is forwards. Modernity is advancement. Modernity is the world inclusion into the world order inclusion into civilization yeah. and all of these are specific ideas that were crafted by european thinkers by racist scientists and spread in in the world this idea of racial difference of yeah. biological racial difference that there's a, a a hierarchy with the gore at the top gale at the bottom um of uh, of humanity of capacity for reason of capacity of, for love and these were legitimate sciences yeah, you they know were, that they so developed the up until the early 1900s, you had that where, the, you know, they studied the bo bones of black people with big hips, big thighs, everything. You know, bones are kept within the Paris museums. They looked at the intellect of thought. They thought that just be, the darker the skin, the smaller the brain, the, the more not inherent the intellect. The, the intellect wasn't there, but you were... You're basically like Neanderthals. Basically, yeah, and you know, and it, all of it is rooted in Christian doctrine. Yeah. Um, it's justified through um, Christian doctrine, justified through like bourgeois like more norms and 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 ideals of respectability and like what it means to be part of civilized society. And this is all the soft power, the cultural power of empire, <laughs> where we regulate ourselves now. So respectability becomes a way in which you sit a certain way, you talk a certain way, yeah. you dress a certain way. Kulli dadi is messy, tight yeah, dadi yeah. is neater. Certain pug looks more militants and pug, yeah. like you know the, 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 all of these self-regulation all of this indirect rule of the colonizer on our minds and our bodies and then people repeat it like an original thought like you know but it's like no these are learned social norms and upending them is part of the struggle and and yeah so like i mean i've learned a lot of this this stuff from my ma and now like i can point to certain writers or certain thinkers and again like this you know this kid in their arena of having legitimacy but the most important thing with the ma it's given me space to um, explore my own thoughts and yeah. like um, explore, um, you know, this work in a lot more detail, in a lot, uh, in a in a slower pace, which I've discovered. I've found the, the um, you know, this MA quite actually a therapeutic process, yeah. because in the kind of Panthic activism world, everything moves so fast and so quick, and we're doing so much. But in this space, it's like you know, you're spending like a week reading an article, and then another week reading another three articles, and yeah. then you know, you're writing something. So it, the the pace is quite nice, and and being you know, um, kind of looking at thinkers and writers that I had read, you know, before out of kind of necessity, like I need to know mm. what this thinker says and why this where this idea came from to now kind of um, being able to explore them in a lot more detail and understanding how, you know, um, they were in conversation with European writers and how they were writing against and, and really being in awe of a lot of their work as well, like, you okay. know, like Stuart Hall and all these Yeah, I was about guys. to say, have you got any that spring to mind? So Stuart Hall, what does Stuart Hall talk about? Talks about like race, talks about like the West, talks about like, you know, the, the cultural formation of these ideas okay. and like Amy Césaire talks about like... Um, uh, um, colonialism and Fanon obviously is like really famous talks about colonialism and he talks about like what the idea he's most famous for most controversial for I suppose is that this idea about violence that like you know you gotta overthrow the colonizer through armed struggle you know mm -hmm. and obviously I, reading this as a sick I'm like yeah I, I've heard that before somewhere <laughs> well, uh, well I was about to say you, yeah. you hear that in the film uh, Jameer Singh says you know we've done the peaceful yeah. struggle and San Janelle said yeah. now it's time for the armed struggle and you're honestly like reading a lot of these thinkers like seeing how how sick he is so far advanced in this search mm. and why like our Sangarsh is so important like you know kisi ne kisi da ithe hath nahi farna and like that updesh that we have of sarb sanji walta mm. sarvat de pale da raj sirjana halemi raj sirjana yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like we gain raj and we lose raj for the same reason sa dekho yeah. zulm bardash nahi hunda yeah. capturing power alone isn't the end for the khalsa holding power alone isn't the end of the khalsa it is dusht da nash karna hai ohna da matha fena hai bardash nahi karni hai chizan kisi ke koi bhukha nahi jana chahida like very alien idea you know like you see so much sick charity is so deep 
deeply ingrained within us we see someone hungry we sadde kol jadeya nahi janda no, you, can't. you can't right so you see someone on the side with food somebody struggling you're just like I've got to give some. And you see like you know the the stats come out six of the most charitable community is because Guru Nanak Sahib ne sade inna dunga bhareya hoya sade hirdyan de vich like you, these are concepts right but it's not just about for us now where we ha- where the space that we're not permitted to go into is religion being confined to our private sphere yeah. what we're not allowed same way with muslims and same way with non christians you're not allowed your religion to in- uh, interfere and influence public policy so okay. they can say god save the queen and you know the queen has the divine right to rule and she can be the head of state and the monarch everything uh, um, christianity has secularized itself yeah. you will never be secular so basically they keep a, a they keep a barrier between You know like how they say Christianity is the church is sick. Yeah, we know it because what yeah. you've talked about is I've just watched an article last night on uh Christian nationalism in America. Mm. And then you've got obviously Christian um religions such as the Mormons. Mm. The Mormons say that if you are white you can get to mm-hmm. the spiritual life. If you are not white, then you can only get to the domains after you. So you're just like, oh, "Hang on, you don't even get the same reward afterwards following the same faith because of the color of your skin something that god has put him out of my has done himself it's yeah. not to do with your choice or what not and the thing is when you like so, hear those ideas of, as a sick obviously growing up in in an environment like you know where there's so much bani being recited and you know at the familiarity like you know that the um tradition with the jatha like you know so one of the greatest works of the jatha has produced the amrit kirtan mm-hmm. shabad de vich pranali jodni ek shabad nu dujje shabad naal jodna you get a, an understanding for gurbani yeah. um and like hearing these ideas from the angrej like it, it just they never made sense at mm-hmm. all you know like when when i would watch films or anything you know like produced here i'd always see like the good things as sick things like these are sick ideals mm. but they're not in here they're not and and this maj de vich chuni mil they you get it from their fantasy you know depiction of how they think the world should be and obviously so is agora who's the you know at <coughs> yeah, the center of yeah. that you know but you don't see it in their samaj right yeah. like so that was very grounding for me and and that's always been really really grounding and like throughout this like kind of ma like to explore those ideas and and understand like why um especially like sick academia within the the university right yeah. why it will always be so limiting and like and like seeing what a messy place it is you know seeing how much whiteness has uh, has space within sick academia seeing like how um how silly and how shallow their understanding of the the sangarsh is mm-hmm. like you know it is laughable like you know like the way the i mean like beyond ethno nationalist religious fundamentalist you know and like no concept of who sant janel singh was yeah, at right, all right. like I, i don't know this is the pinnacle of like sick academia i mean just recently some better stuff has been written mm. and there is stuff that's on the fringes um but again obviously you then that type of work is is crit- critiqued as being biased or not fitting in like you know this mainstream tradition so even six don't have space within sick academia yeah. um but yeah for me like santaji and sangarsh is um, you know as we'll talk about is is very very important because not only because of um you know like the bahadri and the surbirta mm. but because of what it means to us understanding our relationship with the world yeah. and that i think is one of the big purposes of the documentary no it's fine um Tell me about your path from education to employment today. So what is it that you do? What is it that sustains you to be able to do all the projects that you do? So from um university, you know, I tried I, I had a couple of, like random jobs, you know, yeah. um worked for like a a paper company at one point. Um but my interest was always in in this, you yeah. know, like pant da ki kar sakde ha. Um and then when our first project was the um exhibition that we did the yep. candle in the dark um and this is the N- NSY yeah it? this was the NSY so let's let's forget that let's just go to tell me about NSY for your involvement and how it commenced let's do that because that's going to talk about your employment through there yeah so basically when um, kind of NSY merges it like that Rajju on a death sentence thing okay. um and uh, there was a there was a couple of like Norjon meetings that were called um that we went to um and you know we realized that there's a big kind of dearth on like resources um our perspective quite differs as well like we're like you know we should be calling for Rajjuana to be hanged not for clemency from the state because the issue is one of sovereignty and liberation and Khalistan the issue is not for seeking humanity 
yeah. no justice from the state they're never going to give it so you know like we should ch- the terms of the conversation the framing isn't something that we we necessarily related to so um, in that meeting we were like we kind of proposed the idea that like, you know we need a non joint jathe bandi we need to get organized we need to kind of develop the resources um and out of the second meeting one of the things there one of the elders suggested the name national security federation yeah. so we took that name and um yeah then we kind of um we kind of figured it out i guess it was a process of what it meant to become jathe band then you know re- understand um this type of organizing and then at one point I, I stopped working I left my work you yep. know and I was like yeah let's just do this exhibition let's develop these type of resources um and that's still kind of a a central kind of theme i think like the documentary merges out of that same idea mm-hmm. if you look at other movements like you know palestine hoge like you know the irish movement like you know kurdistan even you know um there's so much documented and so much that they can point to and like sada the as ja indian sarkar likh di hai ja bike hoye bande likh de hai so we can't really point to people like to these resources so one of the first things we did was made a infographic about pai rajwana okay um and we wanted to kind of focus on um you know like the quality of the resource should be really good you know like this is the panta panta di tija and yeah. when we did the exhibition as well like nobody had kind of made an exhibition like that you know that scale and we did it all over the country and i think we bit off way more than we could chew as well like I, they literally just you know i was trying to work at the same time and do this and as like, it's not going to happen so yeah. I, i left the job um and then yeah it's just literally been like you know odd bits and bobs trying to you know do the pantic work as the priority um and out of that my my role which i'm in now as the program director for the Khalistan center that okay. emerges out of like all of this kind of this building that we were doing through national security federation the you know the the work that we were doing the connections that we were making which is really really important um and that that kind of desire to work a little bit differently to focus it inwards to develop our own capacity to realize that we don't understand nobody's got the answers um you know that that the meetings and you know um the kind of reactionary discourse isn't going to solve anything it's always going to be there we need to move at our own pace yeah. we need to set the terms of engagement the representation politics ain't going to cut it all of these issues are cyclical um you know and that kind of really informed how we how we moved how we did things um, and I've been in this role with the Khalistan Center for about 2 years now yeah. and like we got covid hit so we haven't been able to um do what we need to do but the, on track to do, yeah it? but the the documentary kind of emerges out of yeah. that um and yeah the goal's always been to you know to like grapple with these ideas of leadership of um resource building of yeah. creating that space where we can actually think on our own terms um where we can develop like analysis and critique and um and develop tools and resources and take the stuff that we've learned and um you know kind of uh, distribute that and build on that so yeah. there's a lot that we want to do in in that kind of similar vein um you know as the documentary and as the kind of resources we've developed through NSYF how many members have you got as part of NSYF as in not um members in membership but as in members who are active who are doing stuff Oh, there's a handful of us you know there's yeah there's a handful of us that that are active that are contributing um but yeah i mean it go, do you all goes feed up into the um the um the Kalistan center do you all feed it into is that just something that you've got a responsibility of so there's the, there's a, a lot of organizing behind the scenes a lot yeah. of knowledge on behind the scenes who like do like immeasurable amount go of work to, yeah to, so the, and there's a lot of transnational organizing that's occurring between like the center and you know national security federation and other knowledge on jate bandia and that's something that we've always been really kind of interested in connecting to that pantic core because yeah. that that's what drives everything they're the ones that are revolving around guru sahib para rakh de a bania yeah. par de a like you know and if we can't connect to that pantic core then you know it's not worth connecting to like anybody else yeah yeah so like that's that's what kind of doing we're trying to um, move it in a in a different way so yeah. we've got there's a, there's a few of us right across borders there's a few here in the UK um, yeah, so, yeah. and then the 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 work of national security federation essentially powers the center um and the center gives us space and it's because of the center's because of the work that the nordron have been doing yeah. to get that funding to produce the documentary to make sure the work of the center is happening um and to give us a space to really like figure this out because like i said in so no one's got the answers no one's got the road map um you know like the you must have a road map so there must be aims and objectives for what you're doing 
We've I'll got ideas, set, yeah. Bang, one, two, three. This is what we want to do. We've got ideas, yeah. Yep. We've got ideas. We've got overarching direction that yep. we, what we so want to achieve. So you've got strategic and, yeah. and, and targeted. So Definitely, yeah. Strategic is these are the five things we want over a 10-year period and this is what we're doing this year now, now, now. Like. Definitely. But you need that. You need that in order to look at, you know, yeah. are we actually achieving what we want? Is it specific? Is it targeted? Is it, you know, you need those sorts of things. 100%. And do you think it's been, it's been a constant learning process because realizing that we don't have this isn't this type of institution building isn't modeled for us yeah. like the non-profit version is the charitable version is um you know this type of work isn't modeled like this the, the sangarshi is a new movement that emerges like there and it has gone through different phases like this armed struggle phase and yeah. now we're in a, a new phase and nobody's kind of named at this moment is definitely not the phase of uh, the phase of democratic organizing yeah, of but this is a kind of a new phase that we're in yeah. um and you know and having the space to organize in that way to understand to analyze mm. to get out of this cycle of like reacting um is really really important and unfortunately it's work that's not really valued um yeah that's that's the problem uh, people look at it and go like you said they're focused upon monetary academic academic goals within the world aren't they or, or a product you yeah. need a product right so if you ain't got a product i think uh, i know that we're trying to do these books unless you got a product they're not gonna they don't give a shit yeah and like so the documentary i think um i think a lot of people that like have been engaging with our work and you know with the knowledge on that have been involved in this across borders like i think people have heard like you know us have a different view and a different politics and a different kind of way of looking at things um and i think this documentary really in a product form yeah. um especially how we've done the showings here in the uk at like v- venues and you know we tried to, camps yeah, as well, camps yeah, as well. we've tried to cre- create a space where this type yeah. of viewing can happen um th- I think like I think a lot of people kind of understand now like what our perspective is yeah. you know after having watched a two, two and a half hour documentary that for us still only scratches the surface but yeah. and and I think it's is reminding people a lot of the stuff that they already knew you know yeah. is there but it's been buried by you know this uh, my pursuit no it's fine I'm going we're going to talk about the film in a minute but you've touched upon this already who are your influences in Siki Obviously, your, your yeah. dad's going to be one anyway. The things around Sagarsh, but you've mentioned like Sanjanel Singh. Obviously, there's going to be people who have to. So I, I want to hear from you because the work you've ended up doing has been based off these individuals that have influenced you. Hundred percent. And it, what is it that's influenced them? Having like Sangat of like Sangarshi Singh Singhania, that's you know been a massive influence. That's like been an undercurrent, recurring, you know, throughout and like vi- revitalizing me in ways that I'm you know only beginning to kind of um understand at this moment um sakhiya um like of our gurutyas and like you know of the um shahidi period um our tadivars that celebrate uh, you know th- those periods those moments but also the tadivars that sp- celebrate the majudda sangarsh yeah. um you know they've given me a, a language a way of thinking a way of analyzing um and a, a kind of a fearless framing that is very kind of difficult to to find and of course something else thing like um you know just constantly being in awe of mm. who they were you know in that moment and how far ahead they are of anybody that's alive right now and how far ahead they were at that time yeah. their sochni how deep rooted it was um their analysis like you know like just everything they did was a very deep theorizing of the condition of the sikh as a galam um within the structure of the state yeah. which kaise koi vidwan ko nahi hoya like you know the hani ki wo cheez and then not only that theorizing but the way they organized and lamband kita punjab de vich no jo na nu like uh, this is why it's atyas you know that's why you know um atyas kar kende hai ke 18th sadi da atyas fer dar aata you know like they showed us what it me- means to mm-hmm. be khalsa in this day and age right yeah. so that i mean that's a constantly constantly grounding um influence in my life and mm-hmm. just wanting to that spirit that jazba and you know all the stories that you get from just sh- seeing them let alone anything else or oh, all the stories of the shaheeds like those moments in their jindagi when they were they were faced like not only like the you know the way they engaged in the sangarsh but when they were faced with the the machinery of the state yeah 
you know, and then how they responded in those moments. Um, like, yeah, th those have been the kind of biggest influences, the grounding influences that, you know, there is another way of living. And, yeah. you know, there is a, um, these aren't, these aren't just stories, you know, the, these aren't just exceptional individuals, you know, we say, you know, like we can lionize them and turn them into these romantic, like larger than life individuals. Yes. Um, but I think that's an act of distancing ourselves and our own kamjoriya from our... Yeah, from the idealized state, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Like, it's, there's, there's a way we kind of create distance sometimes, and you've probably seen it. Yeah, the I way it people, we do it all the time. There's a way people hide behind that gutka sometimes, you know? They hide behind that sikhi, that nimrata, that, yeah. you know, the, and it's just a way of shirking off the jummewariya, that asi galam, yeah? Like, sangarsh de vich, yeah? Like, we have a farj, you know? Like, om te paari paiya, saddi jummewariya ke asi kar ni bana, yeah. Like everything but that's it, yeah, they won't sit at home, they won't look at their own yeah. leisures and pleasures. Yeah. But they'll do whatever they can for the but that's what it says, Sikhi's Parupakar is for the assistance of others, yeah. for the help of others. Hundred percent. Who else the, obviously you got San Janel Singh, there's gotta be others. Why you know Singh as well for me is a personal okay. like, yeah. icon and like for me, like these individuals like that, on the modern day, some guys take care of you. Like, you know, those individuals that you can point to, like you know, today people call people gurmuks and stuff like quite loosely, I think. But when you see gurmuks like that, by an oxing, like Jinadi any jarjari sochni sagi, um, that were involved in being jateban, that were involved in collecting maya for the jatebandi, that were involved in writing for the jatebandi. Then they were also involved in like you know they were a deadly assassin for the jatebandi. Yeah. Um, you know, they prayer na apne mata pita nu din dea ke morcha lag gaya, jal jota nu shahid di da moka mil juga. Like that type of sochni, um, you know, one of the sakhiya where they, uh, you know, they, uh, somebody's, they, kisi parvar de vich, apne parvar de vich bethe ya, and like one of their family members, um, you know, koi bache da, koi sagan sugan dena saga, maya moya deni si koi, you know, janam dehara saga, and um, he gives like two, cha, panj rupiya dite ona ne, yeah. Like, you know, you know, you know, and that's all you've given, yeah. And he's like, you know, Joey like, you know, I love that. You I know, love and that. like, so for me, those, those like, Sakya, another one that another singh told me, um, uh, you know, um, singh, they took a jacket, a leather jacket from yeah. here, um, and they took it for Payanok Singh. The next time they went, the, the thing next to them was wearing it, and uh, you know the BBG was like, "Oh, paisa, you know, asi tadele leke and this again." And then his response was, "Kita nu aadhi vich ta mere vich koi fark lagda." Exactly. <laughs> no, no, but I, I, it reminds me of the, you know, San Thari Singh tells a story that Isha, you know, San Janel Singh's son. He gives a story. He says he was young. He was a kid. And San Janel Singh Ju at uh, obviously at um a Kaltak Sav well the Ram um above the um Ram Dasarai halls they were above there. And uh, he came to see them, so they came him and his little brother and Mataji, they came along to see San Janel Singh. And at the time, obviously outside the Rwarsa you could buy like your candy floss, whatever in it. Mm -hmm. But the story is basically uh, San Janel Singh Ju goes to do and and um they go to the loo for a few minutes and they say, come back. And one of the things there was buy him reasoning, go, a rupee, like, like, take one rupee and you can spend it on whatever. And then Sanjay Nelson, you come back and they see each thing playing with a the rupee. They're like, where's he got that from? At least he can go and get something. And Sanjay Nelson said, put that money back. I said, it took a lot of money. He goes, I'll give you what's in my pocket, but I haven't got anything. But he goes, if we start taking puja down, if we start taking money that's been given by others, but it's that sort of thing. They didn't even look at the, you know, their family sort of life because they were just like, mm -hmm. it took a lot of for the vidyarthis that are learning, it's all that sort of stuff. They didn't even look at that. Well, I'm soft when it comes to my kids and I'm like, oh, la, la, you can take anything sort of thing. 
and their their world view was completely different. It was focused on the pump all the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah. And all of those kind of stories have been like hugely influential, hugely. I mm. even hearing it like from my dad as well when he talk about barkat like kidda mel diya like yeah. the same thing, right? Like yeah. pant de paise ya and he you would say one thing he's like you know e raah de utte bahut kuch milna maya bhi milugi, sifta bhi milugi, sangat diya, seesa bhi milugi, yeah. but you got to remember e pant de khate de vich paniya. Yeah, exactly. Apne khate ch nahi pauniya. Jo vi hega maya sift vadi aayi yeah. pant di ya. And Unless like, it's not for your own fame and fortune, yeah. is it? Yeah, and to to think about those sick teachings, then to think about the environment within which this is going on. Like, yeah. Adda par asangar chal reya, bovar diga leya. Like the sarkar ne takya hoya ke khatami kar dena singanu. Um, like it's a deadly environment, and in that environment, must there yeah. in that environment any shakti and alcohol in that environment they have so much clarity, like you know. that i mean like those uh, words fail in it like that that is the sikhya for me that is the the inspiration the coordinates the grounding jo vi ke log o zindagi hai ode vich sab kuch hai ode vich outside of that is just varying degrees of compromise and like apne le koi tha ban juga koi sukh sahulat mil jugi like ode vich o ta o ta maut ya asal de vich pawan jinna marzi paisa ikattha kar lo ya jinne marzi sukh di zindagi ji lo o maut ya asal zindagi ade vich ya and Uh, you know that that's where you get that chalak from what it means to be alive and be a sick so for me those have been the the um the things that i've been pulled to the most i guess and like yeah. you know trying to nurture those feelings uh, ha- is a, a constant struggle you know yeah. and like and being grateful and being you know like blessed ke guru sahib ne you know ni mari mutta ti seva len jo ge samjhaya ya apne panth de lar jori rakhya to keep you attached to the panth always yeah. forever grateful honestly yeah.